Okay, I'm very glad I didn't have any new albums to review this weekend because I've got two videos in the long form style to do this weekend, and I am going to be here for a while because of that. And it is hotter than the devil's ass crack outside, so I gotta get through these so I'm not in here sweating. I did have the air conditioner running for a little bit, but you know, can't run it throughout the video. Also, it's raining at the moment, so if you hear rain bouncing off my air conditioner, I'm sorry. I can't control the weather. I'll just try to work through the best I can. Anyway, welcome back to I Want to Talk About, the series where I take a topic, I sit on camera, and I blabber about it. And as you could tell from the title, today I want to talk about the latest Nintendo Direct for June of 2024. We have pretty much reached the end of not E3 season, obviously since the official cancellation of E3. June has kind of continued to be the month where game companies showcase their new games, announce stuff, blah blah blah, but it's just not really called E3 anymore. Basically, the E3 thing has kind of been taken by Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest show, and there are other showcases that happen around this time, like the recent Xbox showcase that I thought was very good. Obviously, though, Nintendo doesn't really participate in Summer Game Fest. They do their own separate thing which leads to this Nintendo Direct right here, which is the first Nintendo Direct that we've gotten of any kind since the Partner Showcase in February, and it's the first full-length Nintendo Direct that we have gotten since the one that happened last September, both of which I did videos on, and you can find those at the links in the description. With this Nintendo Direct over here, though, I really wasn't sure what to expect out of it, because last year was a very good year for Nintendo as far as first-party titles, but I kind of knew that it would probably be the last big year for first party games with all the rampant rumors about the next console coming along. And earlier this year, we did get the confirmation that Nintendo would show off the next console before the end of the fiscal year, so sometime before March of 2025, which is why I was even surprised to see that this showcase was going to be a full-blown Nintendo Direct and not a partner showcase or a mini or something like that. Because in my mind, I was like, what in the world could Nintendo still have planned for the current gen Switch especially because they had confirmed before the show that we weren't going to hear about the next system beforehand, or during the show for that matter. Still though, I was just hoping to be entertained and I was hoping to be able to see at least some games coming to the Switch this holiday season to make the lineup a little exciting. And ultimately, yeah, that's what I got. I didn't get the strongest Nintendo Direct in the world, but what I got was confirmation that the rest of the Switch's lineup from here on out is still going to be pretty good. Obviously, I have my notes here right in front of me. We could just jump right into the games that they showed off. The first thing that they showed was a pretty nice surprise that I don't know if a lot of people really saw coming. Mario and Luigi Brothership. What a pleasant surprise. Who could have predicted that Nintendo would bring back the Mario and Luigi series? Who? Who could have done it? Oh yeah, this is the first Mario & Luigi game to come since 2019's remake of Bowser's Inside Story on the 3DS, which bombed pretty hard in sales, the levels of which Mario games don't usually see, and it was a major factor in the closure of longtime developer Alpha Dream. More so than that though, it's the first original game in the series since Mario & Luigi Paper Jam in 2016, the first entry in the series to be fully 3D and also the first one to be on a home console. Typically this franchise has been very handheld oriented, but obviously Nintendo has brought many a handheld franchise to the Switch at this point, and it looks like Mario & Luigi is another one. Now I don't have much experience with the franchise, the only Mario & Luigi game that I really played in any capacity was Mario & Luigi Dream Team on the 3DS, and only for a little bit, just because it came with my 3DS, I got the special Luigi 3DS XL edition or whatever it was called. But it is genuinely great to see this franchise return. I'm not usually into turn-based RPGs, but I really enjoyed the Super Mario RPG remake, and I've been enjoying the old school Paper Mario games as well, so I'm definitely looking forward to giving this game a chance, especially because the trailer was very entertaining. The visual style of this is so awesome. It's so vibrant and so expressive. It honestly gave me a pretty good laugh. The gameplay also looks very fun. I think it brings its own twist onto the established formula of the other Mario RPGs, and all in all, it just looks great. I'm very interested in playing it. It's coming out November 7th, so that'll be something to look forward to around the holiday season. Then after that, we got to look at Nintendo World Championship NES Edition. This was kind of quietly announced 
announced a while back, months before we knew a Nintendo Direct was happening, but this just seemed like a bit of a reminder that it's coming. A bit of a bite-sized collection of NES game challenges or whatever you want to call it. It seems like a pretty cool idea, and I think it's probably the closest we're getting at this point to a new NES Remix game on the Switch. I'm just not really sure if it's my kind of game or if I'm going to be buying it myself. Maybe I'll be more excited if they release more versions of this series, but with other consoles. Like, hopefully this NES edition isn't the only one that they do. I understand that the Nintendo World Championship is only really centered around the NES, but it would certainly be cool to see more games like this come out with consoles that aren't just the NES. Though I will say the physical edition with the gold NES cart seems cool as fuck. This is coming July 18th, so pretty soon. Hopefully that's something you guys are looking forward to. Moving on from there, we got to look at Fairy Tale 2, the new game based on the Fairy Tale manga and by proxy anime. That's apparently the sequel to a 2020 RPG. I honestly have no experience with this franchise, nor anime period. The only anime that I watch, as I've mentioned, is Cyberpunk Edge Runners. So this one kind of flew over my head a little bit. It seems cool if you're a fan, but otherwise there's not really much I can say about it myself that I'll be diving into. And in this video, I don't want to linger on games that I don't really know much about because we have a lot to talk about and I have a whole nother video to film after this. So yeah, not my thing, but hopefully it's something you're looking forward to and it's coming out this winter, so Hopefully that's something you're excited for. Following up on that, we got to look at Fantasian Neo Dimension, an enhanced version of a previously iOS released game, Fantasian, which is notably headed by two Final Fantasy Legends series creator Hironobu Sakaguchi and composer Nobuo Uematsu. I barely knew this was a game before the Direct, but it seems to be a pretty well-liked mobile title, so it's nice to see that there is an enhanced version of it coming to the Switch, and other consoles too from what I've seen. With that said, while I mentioned earlier that I have warmed up to turn-based RPGs just a bit, the genre is not really my thing, so this probably won't be something that I'll choose to play. But it is very cool for the fans, and it's coming out this holiday season, so maybe that's something you're looking forward to more than I am. After that, we got to look at a new update to Nintendo Switch Sports that adds basketball. But y'all assholes still won't add baseball? I'm just kidding. I do own Nintendo Switch Sports, and I have played it at least a little bit. It's a decent game, but I feel like it doesn't really recapture the magic of the original Wii Sports to me. So I'd honestly just prefer to play that game if I still had my copy. Don't know where the hell it is in my house, but I haven't been able to find it. Well, yeah, basketball is here now. Apparently this was in Wii Sports Resort, but I didn't play a ton of that game. The only thing I really remember about it was swordplay because... Come on, who doesn't remember Swordplay from Wii Sports Resort? So yeah, this didn't really register to me, but it is cool to see that it's still getting updates, even if this doesn't seem like anything that's going to make me pick the game back up. But it's coming out later this summer, so hopefully that's something you guys are excited about. But then we got into a pretty underrated title that I thought looked pretty cool, Mio Memories in Orbit, a new title from a small French studio known as Du's DZM. Thank you, High School French, for helping me with that one. And it's published by the kings and queens of publishing AA and indie-style games, Focus Entertainment. It's a Metroidvania, and I know we get a lot of those today, but this one honestly looks really cool to me. I don't know if it's the aesthetic or the gameplay style or what, but something about the trailer reminded me of the Ori games, and I love Ori, so... Honestly, if you make anything that reminds me of Ori, I'm going to kind of be like, ooh. And this game's emphasis on fast-paced movement seems really awesome. I'm definitely keeping my eye on this one. It's coming out sometime next year, and hopefully it's something that ends up being as good as it looks. A couple small ones after that, we then got to take a look at a new update to Disney Illusion Island titled Mystery of Monoth. Seems to be some new story content and missions of the sort and things like that. I played Disney Illusion Island when it came out last year, and I did like the game but I wasn't exactly, like, in love with it. So this announcement didn't do a ton for me. I'm glad it is a free update, and I'm sure those who enjoyed the game more than I did will be happy with it. But personally, I don't think it's really going to influence me to jump back on my Switch and load the game back up or anything like that. It is cute for what it is, though, and it dropped immediately after the Direct, so hopefully you guys are having some fun with it if you are playing it right now. But then Nintendo really upped the hype, because the next thing they showed was Hello Kitty Island Adventure. I shit you not when I say that at approximately 10.09 in the morning, when watching the Direct Live on the TV in my living room, with the window open and me noticing out of the corner of my eye that someone walked by, 
I quite literally screamed, Hello Kitty! at the top of my lungs because this is everything that we as a society have built towards in our lives. Hello Kitty, baby. Actual peak gaming right here. If you don't know, then no. You gotta get on this shit. You better know. I don't even know how I can exaggerate right now. I'm busy looking at the camera potentially making me blurry, and I'm worried. I hope it's not. But, yeah. In all seriousness, I only really know of Hello Kitty Island Adventure because it was nominated for a Game Award last year, and supposedly there was some kind of South Park joke where years before the game came out, Butters mentioned the name or something like that, so that's funny, I guess. I don't really watch South Park, so I wouldn't know. And it does sound like the game is actually good and not in an ironic way, so it's kind of good to see that it's on a new platform and that it's been stripped from the confines of Apple Arcade. With that said, speaking of which, where's that Sonic game that was only on Apple Arcade? When are we getting that on consoles? I don't know, but either way, this is apparently coming to the Switch in 2025, and God damn, I don't know if I can wait that long, man. I need this in my life. Stat. Okay, not really. But the next thing they showed was even more peak, Looney Tunes Wacky World of Sports. I'm telling you, Nintendo's just piling on the peak at this point. Hello Kitty and now Looney Tunes Sports? Come on, man. How could they get more hype than this? Who needs sports games when you have the Toon Squad on your side? Which, by the way, missed opportunity. They should have titled the game something related to the Toon Squad. You quite literally have basketball in the game. How do you not make that reference? In all seriousness, the game looks cute, but given that it's Game Mill publishing it, I have some trust issues. Like, yeah, sure, Nick All-Star Brawl is good and fun and I like those games, but what about the other games they put out? Yeah, that's what I thought. So yeah, maybe it could be fun, but I'm not really getting my hopes too high. But it's coming out later this fall, so I guess we will see fairly soon. Then after that, we got to look at a new update to Among Us. This was apparently the thing that signaled to everyone that a direct was coming. Something about this got posted early and people used it and they were like, oh, hey, that means we're getting a Nintendo Direct that day. And to that I say, Whoopsie. Essentially, this new update added some crewmate and imposter roles, which is pretty cool. Nothing too mind-blowing. I didn't think we'd get another new map this quickly. But as someone who still very much enjoys playing Among Us with my friends, I'm very happy to see it's still getting the support that it does. And this update apparently dropped immediately after the Direct, so that's fun. And I hope the new roles are very fun to play with. Then we got to take a look at Farmagia, a new title from Marvelous. It's basically like a creature-based farming game that also looks like a turn-based RPG of some kind. It's like Marvelous is taking what it's done with the Story of Seasons games and just kind of throwing some action on top of it. And I mean, it does look cute. The visuals are plenty colorful, and I really love those fox creatures that show up throughout the trailer. But again, this kind of game was really never going to be my thing. These are genres that I don't really play that much. And even if you blend them together, they're not really my thing, so I'll just leave this one to those that are much more excited for it than myself. But it is coming November 1st, so at least that's going to be something to look forward to in the back end of this year. For a while, it looked like the holiday season of gaming was going to be a little dry, so it's nice to know that it won't be as dry now. Back on the first party front for a minute, we actually got something that did very much surprise me. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. After the years-long rumors of a new Donkey Kong game, I did not expect that the next Donkey Kong game we were going to get was going to be a remaster of a game that already had gotten re-released before. Though, of course, I understand we're probably not going to get that new game until the next system is ready. Nevertheless, yes, this is a remaster of the 2010 Wii game, Donkey Kong Country Returns, which also got re-released in 2013 on the 3DS as Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. And apparently this new release is not being handled by the game's original developers, Retro Studios, but... You'll understand why in a minute. Nevertheless, I personally love Donkey Kong Country Returns. I think it's a fantastic game, and it's the kind of game I'm happy to see come to a system like the Switch. And it's the kind of game I really wouldn't mind buying and playing again. Hell, it turns out this version does actually have the extra levels that were added to the 3DS version, so that's pretty awesome. And I hope it has some of the other stuff that was added to that 3DS version too. We'll find out fairly soon because it's coming January 16th, which is actually my brother's birthday, so... I'm very much looking forward to that. From there, we got a couple announcements that weren't really for me, but were still pretty hype nonetheless, because the next thing we got to look at was the Dragon Quest III HD 2D remake, which supposedly had been already announced before the Direct, but yeah, I don't really pay attention to Dragon Quest, so I was never going to know that. Still, I know this franchise is giant and very significant, and it seems a lot of people are really happy to see Dragon Quest III get the HD 2D treatment, which I'll give it that much. I'm not really into this style of game necessarily, that kind of RPG style, but 
I personally love HD 2D visuals. I think they look awesome. So I'm happy to see a game like this get that kind of treatment. It's such a cool visual style and it does look great for the game itself. No, I probably won't purchase or play it myself, but I'm very happy for the fans that will be playing it. And I hope it ends up being a great remake. It's also coming fairly soon because it's coming out November 14th. So that's pretty awesome. And I'm very excited for the Dragon Quest fans that will be getting that. I'm also excited for Dragon Quest fans because right after that, they announced that Dragon Quest 1 and 2 are getting HD 2D remakes. I know that's another announcement that got a lot of people hyped, and I could definitely see why. Dragon Quest basically was the template for the RPG as we know it, so it's cool to see it and Dragon Quest 2 get the HD 2D treatment. It was also cool to see series creator Yuji Hori show up in this show as well. Holding a plush toy of slime, I thought that was adorable, because even though I don't know Dragon Quest, I think slime is an adorable character. Again, I won't partake in these games myself, but I hope they end up being amazing. The 1 and 2 remakes are coming out sometime next year, and that's definitely going to be something to look forward to. Following up on that, we got to look at Funko Fusion. Nintendo, slow down. I mean, sure, the Dragon Quest stuff was cool, but you don't gotta lay it on so thick that you have so much peak gaming to show. Wasn't Hello Kitty enough? Seemingly, this is the debut title from 1010 Games, and the only thing that this trailer really did for me was when I saw Freddy Fazbear show up, I jokingly went, <gasps> FNAF! Please don't get me started on that franchise. But yeah, as much as I want to be ironic and goof off with this part of the show, this game doesn't really look like it's doing anything for me. I mean, it's cute, and it's got all these franchises in it, and I think that's pretty cool, but I just think it looks like a kind of low-rent title that doesn't seem all that exciting. I'd love for them to prove me wrong, and chances are they probably will, but I just don't see much in it to be excited about. Granted, it's coming fairly soon, September 13th, so... It seems like if they're gonna prove me wrong, they're gonna do it fairly soon. But I will say, apparently it has Voltron in it, so that's kinda cool. Then after that, we got a look at Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, just a simple reiteration that it's coming. It's not uncommon for Nintendo to have a Nintendo Direct so close to a new game's release that that game shows up in the Direct for a few seconds, even if it has an approximate release date of yesterday. Of course, I'm looking forward to playing the game. I've mentioned in a couple videos already, but this is the only Luigi's Mansion game that I haven't played. But yeah, how much more do I really need to say about it with how close it is? It's coming out June 27th, and honestly, by the time this video goes up, the game might already be out, so there is not really much more I could say. You guys might already be playing it by the time this video goes up. Still excited for it, but yeah, it's not really much I can talk about here. Following that, we got to look at the new Denpamen. So I had no idea that this game, when it was shown off, was actually a new game in an established franchise. Supposedly, it's the sixth game in an augmented reality game franchise developed by Genius Sorority, who previously developed a multitude of Pokemon spin-offs, including the GameCube duology of Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. And supposedly, this one is an RPG. Because when someone asked Nintendo how many RPGs they wanted in this Direct, they simply responded with yes. Farming Sims, so yesterday bring on the RPGs. But yeah, this looks silly. It looks cute. It's apparently free to play, so that's worth something. I don't really think it's anything I'm going to be that into, but I guess the fact that it's free means maybe I might give it a shot. And it's coming out July 22nd, so at least it's fairly soon. Then we got to take a look at Metal Slug Attack Reloaded. Now, when this showed up, I thought it was a brand new mainline title, but supposedly this is a re-release of a game that was previously released on mobile devices in 2016 but taken offline sometime last year. Now it's back on PC and Switch, and get this, they took out the microtransactions. <gasps> the Mad Lads. Honestly, good. Thank God that they did that. Yeah, I don't really have experience with Metal Slug, so it's not like an announcement of any kind would have been that exciting to me, but the fact that it's a tower defense spinoff makes me think about it even less. I'm sure it's a good game, and I'm sure it's going to be good for the fans to not only have it back since it went offline, but now have it on the Switch. But yeah, it's just not a game I personally really care for. Granted, it did drop immediately after the Direct, so hopefully if you're playing it now, you're having a fun time with it. From there, we got an announcement that seemed, from the show standards, to be pretty anticipated. Darkest Dungeon 2. I can't say I'm very familiar with the first Darkest Dungeon game. I do recognize the name, and when I was researching for this video, I did recognize the box art, but I honestly didn't know a second game was ever announced or released, so that's apparently a thing. But yeah, it seems like it was only available on PC. It had an early access release in 2021 and then got a full release sometime last year. 
And now it's finally coming to Switch and also PlayStation apparently, so that's cool to see it expand its reach beyond PC. I love the visual style and I don't mind me a good roguelike here and there, though I'm more of a roguelike type. But being that this is a turn-based game, it's not quite as up my alley. I'm sure it's a good game and I've heard many say that it's a good game. It's just not really for me, but I'm happy to see that a new audience will get a chance to play it. And very soon too, because it's coming out July 15th, so... That's pretty awesome. Hope you guys are looking forward to that. From there, we got to take a look at some new Nintendo Switch Online titles and a pretty decent lineup of them this time around. The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past slash Four Swords and Metroid Zero Mission for the Game Boy Advance. And then they also announced Turok Dinosaur Hunter and Perfect Dark, the latter two of which are part of the new mature collection of N64 games. So pretty good titles here. Metroid Zero Mission is a game that I really love and I do like Perfect Dark as well. So yeah, some pretty good stuff to play this month and it dropped immediately after the Direct, so that's pretty cool. Hopefully you guys are having fun with those if you do have a Nintendo Switch Online subscription, at least a subscription to the Expansion Pass. Moving on from there, we got to look at Phantom Brave the Lost Hero. Now while a part of me wants to make a joke about another RPG being announced at the show, this is something I have to give at least a little bit of credit to. From what my research tells me, this is a sequel to the original Phantom Brave game, a title that dropped all the way back in 2005. 20 years ago. Apparently that game had been ported and remade a few times over, but now after two decades, it's finally getting a proper sequel. And that's awesome, because look, even if it's a game I don't really care about, I know how it feels to really look forward to a game, or any piece of media really, and have to wait an incredibly long time to get a follow-up. It's not exactly a game, but I don't need to be reminded that I waited about 13 years for Avatar The Way of Water to come out. It took two and a half years of middle school, all of high school, all of college, and two years post-college to get the sequel, so I get it. In that regard, I'm very happy for those that are finally getting the sequel. With that said, again, it's very much not my thing, so I will leave this to everyone else. But again, as someone who knows how it feels to wait incredibly long for a sequel of some kind, I'm happy for the fans. And it's coming out sometime next year, so that's pretty awesome. I'm very happy for you guys. What I'm more happy about is the next set of games that they show. There was a lot here that I was really excited about, starting off with Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics. Now this right here immediately got my attention. A re-release collection featuring a bunch of the major Marvel vs. Capcom titles? Sign me the fuck up. Hell, I want to get this collection for Marvel vs. Capcom 2 alone. I don't have a lot of experience with that game, but I have greatly enjoyed what I've played of it, and I've been really wanting to see it get re-released on modern platforms, because I know it, along with some of the other old-school Marvel vs. Capcom games that are in this collection, were re-released on PSN and Xbox Live Arcade during the 7th generation with the PS3 and 360, but those versions were delisted, so it's nice to see them finally come back here. I also read that one of the games that's included here, the 1993 Punisher game, is the first faithful console port of the game, and that's freaking awesome. It's so cool to see these games come back, and also, when they showed off the sound test, they knew good and well that they couldn't show us a collection like this without letting us hear How did reviewers hate MVC2 soundtrack? It's an absolute gem. This is definitely something I need to grab. It's coming out sometime later this year, and you know, I'm gonna be all over it. Just like I'll be all over the next game that they showed, which I didn't expect to see, Super Mario Party Jamboree. Great name, by the way. They basically just called the game Big Mario Party Big Party. Shout out to Chari5 for that joke. But yeah, for some reason, even though it's been three years since Mario Party Superstars, I did not expect to see another Mario Party game this soon. But nevertheless, we're getting one. I've been really enjoying a lot of the recent Mario Party games, especially Superstars. I've had a lot of fun with that game. To the point where I honestly, at a point, didn't feel like I really needed a new Mario Party but I do enjoy the series, so I am game for a new one, and it feels like this is going to be maybe the biggest one yet. I mean, 110 mini games, seven boards, several of which look way bigger than the normal boards, and a 20 player online mode? This honestly sounds like it's gonna end up being a really great game. And as someone who really liked how Superstars had a bunch of content from the older games, especially as someone that didn't really get to play the older games enough, it's nice that it's still gonna have some boards from the older games. I'd like to have a few more, but at least this game has seven boards in it, which is more than the last few games, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah, this looks like a huge game, especially for a Mario Party game, and I'm definitely very excited to play it. It's coming out October 17th, and that's a game I'm definitely gonna be all over when it comes out. And Nintendo wasn't done with the first party goodness, because then we got to look at The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Holy crap. When this first appeared on screen, I honestly had no idea what I was looking at. It has the visual style of the Link's Awakening remake, 
I wouldn't be surprised if it's Grizo working on it. But I thought I was looking at like a remake of A Link to the Past or A Link Between Worlds or something like that. But it turns out it's a totally new mainline game where finally you get to play as Zelda. It's only like we've been asking for that for about a decade now. And the game itself looks great. It's a very unique take on Zelda, but I really like what it's doing with regards to Zelda's magic. And it feels like it kind of fits perfectly for what I'd imagine a Zelda game where you play as Zelda to be like. I'm very interested to explore it because it seems like there are gonna be a lot of ways where you can kind of break the map a little bit to explore things maybe a touch early if you have the right powers. And that sounds pretty cool. It's almost like despite its small scale nature, they're still implementing some of the freedom of something like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom into it. I will admit I'm a little worried about how a game like this is going to play with so little in the way of actual combat, but I'm definitely excited to see what it's going to be like. It's coming out September 26, which is awesome, and apparently there is a Zelda designed Switch Lite that's also going to be launching with it. This is how Nintendo's gonna beat the PS2 sales. And to think it couldn't get any better, Nintendo then showed the best game of the entire show right afterwards. Better than Hello Kitty, better than Funko Fusion, of course, you know that they had to show Just Dance 2025 edition coming out this October. Let's fucking go, baby! That's what I'm fucking talking about! And then after that, we got to look at LEGO Horizon Adventures. Now, when I was first hearing rumors about this game, I definitely tilted my head to the side in confusion. When I saw it at Summer Games Fest, I was just as confused. When I heard at the show that it was also coming to the Switch, I nearly fell out of my chair. When I saw it at the Nintendo Direct and I saw the name Sony pop up during the Direct, I quite frankly did fall out of my chair. Okay, not really, I didn't actually fall out of my chair, but it still felt like a fever dream. I love the Horizon games, but I did not expect, in fact the last thing I expected, was for to get some kind of Lego game. I mean, hey, I've been wanting Sony to diversify the old portfolio, so I'll take it, but even as a straight edge human being, this feels like the kind of idea you come up with after you smoke something. I mean, hey, it looks cute and fun, and there's a very good chance that I'm going to play it when it eventually drops. It just feels like something that I can't believe I'm saying exists. But it looks fun, it looks like a unique take on Horizon, so I'm definitely excited to see where it goes. And it's coming out this holiday season, so that should be something I'm gonna end up playing at some point. Following that, we got to look at Stray. Honestly, I had no idea Stray wasn't already on the Switch. I know it was a timed PlayStation exclusive and it was on PS Plus as well, but a game like this feels like it would have been perfect for the Switch, so I would have thought it would come to the Switch around the time that it came to Xbox, but I guess not. Either way, I played Stray when it came out on the PS5, and again, I liked it, but I didn't really love it as much as some others did. I feel like the novelty of it kind of wore off a little bit quickly when I played it, but again, I think a bite-sized game like this is pretty perfect for the Switch, and I think it's good to see it expand its audience and reach another new system. Obviously, I'm not going to be playing it myself, but hey, I'm sure other people are excited to play it, and I'm glad that Switch owners will get a chance to play it themselves. And it's coming out this holiday season, so hopefully that's something you guys are looking forward to. Nearing the back end of the show, we then got to take a look at Tales of the Shire, a Lord of the Rings game, a new title in the Middle Earth franchise from Weta Workshop, who doesn't seem to have ever made a game, but they have a deep history with visual effects and props, notably with the Middle Earth franchise, so that's fun. Though when I went to their Wikipedia page, one of the first things I noticed was this so that seems a little bit less fun. Independent of that though, this doesn't really look all that interesting to me. I mean, I'm not really that into Lord of the Rings as it stands, but when I think of Lord of the Rings games, my brain goes to much cooler places than a life simulation game such as this. I mean, yeah, it looks cute and all, but I feel like that's the nicest thing I could say about it, that it looks cute. But it's coming out this holiday, so if you are looking forward to it more than I am, there's your chance to play it. Next up, an announcement that I feel like was probably more exciting for a lot of other people, even if I wasn't that into it, was Ace Attorney Investigations Collection, a re-release collection featuring the two Ace Attorney Investigations spin-off titles that were originally released on the DS. I only ever played a little bit of the first game since that collection was on Game Pass, so I don't really know the series that well, but it seems that these spin-offs have you controlling Edgeworth instead of Phoenix Wright, so I hope that's a good thing. But again, I know this franchise is incredibly popular, so this is great news for the fans, and Apparently the second Ace Attorney Investigations game was never actually localized here in America, so it's nice that it'll finally have that chance and fans will finally get to play it officially here in America. Plus in my research I found that apparently the creators of these games have said that they wanted to make a third one, so perhaps if this collection does well that dream will come true 
and the third Investigations game will eventually come. I guess we'll have to see when it comes along, but it's coming out September 6th, so fairly soon. Hopefully it ends up doing well, and if it does, hopefully Ace Attorney Investigations 3 comes along. Getting to some of the last few games, we then got to look at the 100 Line Last Defense Academy, a new title from a Tokyo-based developer known as Two Kaio Games. Yeah, make some noise for that one. As well as Media Vision, the team behind the Wild Arms series. It's funny because when this popped up during the show, my first thought was, wow, this reminds me of Danganronpa. And here I come to find out during the direct and while doing research for this video that three of the four founders of Two Kaio Games were the writer, illustrator, and composer of the Danganronpa series. Wow, my intuition is through the roof right now. But yeah, this game is basically a mix of Fire Emblem and a visual novel style, two styles of games that are far out of my wheelhouse. So as Double D from Ed, Ed, and Eddie would say, This is beyond my capabilities. It is cool for people who are interested in it, but I myself will be skipping out on this one. But it's coming out in early 2025, so hopefully that's something you guys are looking forward to. And then from there, we got to look at Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven, a fully 3D remake of the original 1993 game Romancing Saga 2 that supposedly got a remaster before, but I suppose this is just a from the ground up remake in 3D. Nevertheless, this is another franchise I don't know anything about. And as the final game in what was a packed showing of RPGs, it's another title that just kind of flew over my head. I don't know much about Romancing Saga to begin with, so this announcement was never really going to be for me. I hope fans are looking forward to it though. Again, I don't know if the previous remaster was sufficient or not, but nevertheless, hopefully this is exciting for you and getting to play it in full 3D is gonna be fun. And it's coming out October 24th, so that's definitely something to look forward to in the back end of this year. But then, to close out the show, we got something giant that was crazy to see. It was freaking awesome. We finally got to take a look at Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. I genuinely can't believe we finally got to see it. I mean, I thought Nintendo was going to wait for the next system to show it off, but honestly, who could have seen it coming that Nintendo was going to have Prime 4 ready for a show like this? I truly hope that Prime 2 and 3 get those rumored Switch remasters, and I hope that Prime 4 is really as close as some leakers are making it out to be. Well, I really am a prophet right now. Listen, I gave! But yes, we finally got to see Prime 4, and not only did we see Prime 4, we saw gameplay of Prime 4. It's funny because I didn't react to this announcement with crazy hype like I thought I was going to because I thought we were going to get announcements of the Prime 2 and 3 remasters before Prime 4 got reannounced. So I honestly thought I was looking at the next set of remasters at first. It took me a minute to realize, oh wait, no, this is Prime 4. Still, I'm very happy to finally get to see this game because it's only been like a seven year wait at this point. The game was first announced around this time back in 2017, so now we're finally getting to look at it again. And while I do believe this game will end up being a cross-gen title for Nintendo, I thought it was hilarious just how many people didn't think this trailer was current-gen Switch footage. Y'all forget that the Prime 1 remaster looked genuinely incredible, and Retro really knows how to squeeze the life out of Nintendo's hardware at this point, no matter how old or new it is. And obviously the gameplay looks incredible. For what was basically a first look at gameplay, they really showed a substantial amount of elements to the gameplay. Like obviously the stuff you expect to see, like shooting, scanning, and the morph ball, but it was cool to see all of this together in one trailer. And of course, you knew Silux was gonna come in at the end because that dude is just the biggest hater. He's been hating Samus for 17 years, of course he's excited to be here. But yeah, it's so great to finally get to see this game and I'm absolutely over the moon to get to play it when it's eventually ready. It's coming out in 2025, finally we got a release window. And you can expect that when I make my inevitable video on my most anticipated games of next year, I'll probably be claiming this is my number one most anticipated. So overall, yeah, it was a pretty good show. It's crazy to me just how much is still coming to the Switch even though the new system is coming so soon. The first party lineup that they showed off actually looks pretty awesome. There's a lot of games I'm definitely looking forward to playing, and that makes me very happy. It's nice to see that there's still going to be this many games coming to the Switch. With that said, some people were calling this Direct the best that they've ever done, and honestly, I'm gonna hold my horses on that one. Even though the first party stuff is great, there were definitely some stretches that were a bit lackluster. I can make as many Hello Kitty and Funko and Just Dance jokes as I want, but yeah, a couple points of the show did drag. And look, I know that the RPGs are great for the audiences that love them, but there were a lot. 
and there were quite a few games that had me just kind of like, okay, that looks fine. But even still, there was a lot here for a lot of different audiences. And again, it's nice to see that even the late period of the Switch's life is still going to be packed to the brim with exciting games. So all in all, this was definitely a far better Nintendo Direct than I could have ever expected a late life Nintendo Switch Direct to be. And yeah, it's crazy to think that we're finally about to be this close to the next system. It seems like we might actually only have maybe one more Direct, if that, devoted to the current gen switch and i'm definitely excited to see when nintendo reveals the next system for now though it's nice to know that my current switch is still going to get a lot of playtime. if i had to give the show a rating i'd probably give it between like a c plus and a b minus might lean a little higher just because of the first party games but all in all yeah it was a decent show definitely way better than i expected a late life switch showcase to be and i'm glad to know there will be plenty of games to play on my current switch while i wait for nintendo to announce the new one but of course that's just my opinion on this nintendo direct what did you guys think about it did you like it way more than i did did you hate it way more than i did were you just completely indifferent toward it what's the game you're most looking forward to from the show the game you're least looking forward to from the show whatever your thoughts and opinions are leave them down in the comments below let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do if you guys want to hit like and subscribe and support some of my other ventures that i have linked in the description. Thank you. If not, it's no big deal. I totally understand. And yeah, I'm going to record my 2008 video right after this one, but I need a break because I've been recording this video for almost an hour because my camera's autofocus has been driving me insane. I hope it doesn't show up too badly in the final video. And if it does, I apologize. I don't know how to fix it. And then with the fact that it's been raining and thunderstorms and there's been freaking cop cars or fire trucks going by or ambulances or whatever, you probably heard some of that. The camera might have picked it up. So this filming session has already been driving me insane, and I have another video to film after this. I need a break. I'm sweating. I got to turn the air on. So stay tuned for the 2008 video. But until then, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. I'm probably already blurry in the outro. This camera is driving me nuts.